Howdy YouTube parts. This is Jack Spade here coming to you from High Noon Leatherworks where we're going to show you step by step how to create leather goods from patterns all the way to the finished product. Stay tuned. Howdy YouTube parts. Jack Spade here, High Noon Leatherworks. We're going to start a new project today. We're going to do a leather belt. We're going to do a little bit of uh, stamping on it, do a little basket weave pattern. So it's something we haven't done before. So let's get into it. To start this project, what we're going to do is we're going to get out our leather. Again, I have some really nice leather from Tandy. Let's pull that out. Again, this is a side, full side that I bought from Tandy. Um, and this is what I cut the material out of our 1800s holster project with. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this down on a nice flat surface. I lay it down on my floor here. Get it spread out a little bit. Alright, I'm going to change camera angle and I'll be right back. Okay, what I'm going to do is I've got my leather laid out here on the floor so it's a nice flat surface. And uh, I'm going to use a measuring tape. And this tape is like uh, what you measure, use for sewing or fabrics. And that's what I'm going to measure, how big I want my belt to be. So I'll measure my waist, and then I'm going to have to add some for the end of my belt that goes through my first, my strap on my belt after the buckle, and then I'm going to have to leave some for all the holes so that I can adjust my belt, and then I have to allow for some on the buckle side where I put my buckle and fold it over and either sew it or rivet it. So first thing I'm going to do is do my measurement. And then I'm going to add approximately 8 inches onto that for the place to put my adjustment holes and the extra that I need to do my buckle on the other end. So measure your waist, add approximately 8 inches, and then that should be the length of your uh, initial cut for your belt material. First thing I'm going to have to do is take one side of my leather and I'm going to have to square that up so that I can get a nice straight piece of leather for my belt. So I'll take a straight edge and I don't want to waste any more material than I absolutely have to. So when I take my straight edge I want to make sure that getting it as close to the edge of the material that I can without wasting any material. And you're not going to get away with not wasting any, but you want to waste as little as possible. Or whatever you do have left over, you can use it for another project. I'm just going to go the full length of this piece so I have a nice straight edge. That way I don't just cut a one little chunk out of the side. I'll straighten the whole edge. Then if I want to make any more belts or straps of any kind after that, I've got a nice straight edge here to work with. So let me cut that. And I'll be right back.
I'll keep my scraps. I'll use that for another project. And what that does, that gives me a nice straight edge here to work with when I want to make a belt or a strap. And then I'll take this tool, which is straight cutter, and you can adjust it for the thickness of your leather. And you can also adjust it for how wide you want to cut your strip. Now, there is a razor blade in here, uh, so you've got to be very careful. And it locks in with those two set screws. So, what I'll do is I'll measure this over. I've got it set for one and a half inches. It does have a ruler on it or you can measure it either one over to your blade and uh, I'll go ahead and show you how I'll cut that to make sure it's one and a half inches so I'll start in I use this is flat so this whole edge here is a guide and uh, I'll come in get right to the edge there and then again, that is a razor blade that's marked over, and I have to set it one and a half inches. So what I want to do is I want to pull that through, get that started, and I just want to use my handle. It's got a flat spot on it, and I want to use that handle as a guide to pull that leather completely through there. And remember that that is a nice sharp blade. It does come with extra blades or you can buy blades for them. So you want to keep a nice sharp blade in there. But as you can see as I pull that through, it's making me a real nice straight cut. And you just want to keep your hand wrapped around that handle and that leather in between your thumb and your fingers so that you're keeping it nice and straight it doesn't get in a bind so you don't get wide and narrow it's keeping the same one and a half inch mark all the way down your cut and you just continue till you get to the end and it pulls straight through So you can see it gives us a nice straight strap for our belt. The next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and take my cut strap for my belt and I want to uh, go ahead and do my measurement that I did around my waist plus add my 8 inches. So I'll pull out my measuring tape again. Start at one end. Measure out the length that I need. And mark that. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to double check that. Before you cut it, make sure you measure twice. Just to double check everything. The old measure twice, cut once. Perfect. So I get my measuring tape out of the way. Come back over here on my cutting board area. Put this down. I'll get nice straight on my marks on my cutting board. So I can get a good vertical cut. I'll go ahead and use the straight edge. So I get a good square end on that strap. Again, I'll hang on to this. Uh, I can use bullet for bullet loops or something on a, a holster belt later. So there's our belt blank. So we're ready to go. Uh, next thing I want to do is 
is I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, tapered end on it. And I can do that a couple different ways. You can cut it by hand. Uh, you can mark it however you want. Use whatever kind of pattern you want off of another belt that you have or whatever. Um, I do have these tools that are different sizes and that's what they're for is to round ends of loops or belts um, so you just pick one that's for the width of your belt um, that one's too small you want to make sure it goes all the way around the edge on both ends of your belt This one's perfect. So you can see that one goes off the edge of both sides and that'll put a tapered in just like that. So it rounds the end. So I'll put that on a scrap piece of leather. And I'll make sure I'm square on there from side to side. Take my mallet, and there's my tapered in or my rounded in from my end of my belt. So you can see how that rounds that off. Makes it very professional looking. Here's the square end. That's for my buckle. And I did some pre-measurements. Um, and the measurements that I used was uh, off of a belt that I've been wearing for probably three or four years that has uh, held up great. And it's been a, an excellent belt. It's very comfortable. Um, this you know when you wear a belt that's just the right size how it's so much more comfortable than wearing a belt that's way too long or too short so uh, the belt that i measured off of is one i've worn for years and i just love it so i made me some measurements off of that and wrote them down so that's what i'm going to go off of um, and on this end on the buckle end the square end, um, it's going to fold right at two and a quarter inches. So it's going to fold over. That's where my buckle's going to go. And then uh, I'll also have a strap that I need to put in there, my holding strap, for the, when my belt comes around and goes through my buckle, then I'll have a leather strap for that to go in before it goes into my first belt loop on my pants. So I'll measure that. Put a little mark in the middle. I won't use a pen this time. I'll actually use a little pointed edge tool. And that fold was at two and a quarter inches. So I'll come up two and a quarter inches from that square end. Now I'll mark that, and that'll be the center of my slot for my buckle. Now this is one and a half inches wide, so I'll come over three quarters of an inch. That'd be center from side to side. And then that tells me where to put my slot for my buckle. So the pin that's in the buckle, let me grab one real quick. You have the pin and the buckle that's going to go through your adjustments. So that's where you know uh, where I'm going to put that slot as I measured to that area right there where that's going to go through as that goes around the strap. In fact, that's the buckle I'm actually going to use. So.
me go ahead and show you what I use for that. And that's another punch that's got a slot in it. And it's hollow, just like a round punch. And what that'll do is that'll put a slit. Oh, it's probably about not quite an eighth of an inch wide. And that'll put a slit in there for that to go through. You want to make sure that you're in the center and you're straight. And as I hit it with the mallet, I kind of rock it to one side and then the other until I'm all the way through. And that's what's going to give me that slit in there. And what that does. That allows that to go through that slit and then that strap to go around it like so. So that's the buckle in. Then I want to go back to the end that I rounded off and I want to measure for my holes that I'm going to put in it. Now I'm going to punch my holes in there. Um, the belt that I said that I used as a pattern uh, that's so comfortable that I've used worn for years. Um, my first hole was at three inches from the end. So I'm going to come up three inches from the rounded end. And I'm going to make sure I stay in the center from side to side. And again, center of an inch and a half would be three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to mark it, put a little divot there, and make sure I'm centered side to side at three inches. So that would be my first hole. Then, after that, I'm going to do seven holes. That belt that I liked had seven holes in it total. So I'll mark it from there, and they're an inch apart. So I'll mark from that first hole. I'll put my ruler on that first mark. And then I'll go down and I'll mark it an inch. Two, three, four, five, six. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. So there's my holes that I'm going to punch in my belt. And again, that's for adjustment. And I want to make sure that I use a punch big enough for my buckle pin to go through. And that's a little small. You don't want it real big. That's perfect. So on this punch, that buckle pin goes right in there and it's not tight but it's not super loose so I'll go through starting them with the first hole make sure I stay right in the center of that mark and then I'll work my way down to every mark at one inch
might see those blanks that I'm punching out of there for those holes. You might see those popping out. And I, you don't have to clean those out. They should come out themselves, but I'll clean them out after I use them so they don't sit in there and get stuck. So, all right, there's my holes after I've punched it. So that's my adjustment holes. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grooving tool and we talked about this and we used this in the uh, project for the double loop holster and I'm going to groove around both sides all the way down and what that's going to do is and I'm, I'm just going to come in a little bit I'm not, come, I'm not going to be stitching this or anything I'm going to leave it rough on the back um, but what that'll do is that'll give me a guideline to keep my basket weaving stamping inside of. So, as you can tell, this is a pretty long belt, and uh, it's going to take some uh, a, quite a bit of stamping to do basket weave all the way down this belt. So, it'll be a little labor intensive when we get to that point. And, uh, but I want to make sure that I have a good guideline to start, good straight guideline. So that's why I'm going to use the grooving tool. So let me go ahead and uh, bring you in close and we'll go ahead and, and groove the belt. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start on the square edge since most of that's going to be hidden anyway uh, as you fold it over. This will be on the underside of the belt. So I'm going to start on the square edge. And then when I get down to the round edge that has the holes in it, I'm going to stop a little bit shy of that first hole. Because I'm going to leave this smooth where the holes are, and I'm only going to basket weave to a certain area down here before you get to those holes. So I'm going to stop, and then I'll square that off uh, to do our basket weave. So I'm going to start on this end. And again, I'm just going to use the edge as a guide. Take your time. Make sure you're nice and flat. Make sure you stay right on the edge. So that when we do our stamping, we're going to get a nice, straight, square basket weave stamp. Just work your way down. Keep moving your piece. This grooving tool is doing a really nice job. Again, I got this grooving tool at Tandy. They have excellent high quality tools. Okay, I'm going to stop before I get to that first hole. And I'm going to terminate my groove. Pull that excess leather out of there. I'm going to turn it around. And then this time, I'm going to start on this end because I have a starting point guide from my other side where I stopped. So I could start right there where I stopped on the other side and do the same thing on the other side of the belt all the way down to the square end. You can see, it pretty much keeps all that in one strand all the way down. That, that's a good sign that you have a sharp 
grooving tool. So hopefully you can see those grooves in there on each side. And that, that's going to be our guide for when we do our stamping. So I need to do one more groove. And that's going to be across where I stopped right before I got to the hole. So I'm going to use a straight edge. And I want to make sure I turn that up a little bit because I don't want that round edge as my guide. I don't want that to put a mark on my leather. I'll take my sharp knife, terminate the end of that with the blade so I get a good square end here. And all my stamping will stay in that inside of that. On this end, I'll take my stamping all the way to the end because it won't matter because that will fold over on my buckle. So the next thing I need to do is go ahead and do my beveling on the edge. Again, I'm going to use a small bevel. I don't want to take a lot of material off of this uh, and I will strap this so I can polish my tool before I get started using a scrap piece of leather using some jewelers rouge and I want to make sure that my tool is good and clean it doesn't have any small pieces of leather stuck in it and I'll just strap it and what that does is it polishes it you can see how shiny that gets on the tip and it sharpens it so it's good to go again I'll start on the square end And just like grooving, I want to make a nice, even bevel strokes all the way down. If you can keep it going, great. It might be a little difficult since you got to move your belt. And again, you should not have to press hard to do this. You should just run your tool down the edge. If you have to press hard to get it to bevel or cut the leather, then my suggestion would be you strap your tool again because it's not sharp enough. You should be able just to run that tool down that edge and not have to press very hard. Sometimes you get into a soft piece of leather um, or a soft edge on a piece of leather which is you do that sometimes you run into some soft spots after you cut it um, if you if you have to push very hard on that to make that beveling tool work it will wrinkle that leather up and kind of make a mess so then it's hard to get it all flattened out and straight again so it's best to make sure you have a nice sharp tool But you don't press very hard. You just let that tool do the work. Let it run down the edge. And I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm just running that tool down that sharp edge and it's beveling that edge off and then I'll bevel the end also and I did bevel the round end I went around the end here so you can see I'm 
nice beveled edges. And yes, I am going to flip it over and I'm going to bevel the other side also. This makes for a sharper uh, finished product, makes for a cleaner edge. The rough side of the leather, if you don't have a good sharp beveler, is much harder to bevel, I believe, than the finished side of the leather. So it's much more important that you have a good sharp bevel tool when you're doing the rough side. And sometimes it'll want to catch on some of the leather on the rough side. You just have to be careful. Watch it closely. Again, the key is not to press hard. Let the tool do the work. And then I'll go down the other side. And it really cleans that, that edge, especially the back side, the rough side. But it really makes it look professional. And there's a spot where when I cut it, squared it up on the first major piece, the side that I had, well, squared it up with a knife, the place it didn't cut perfect, that bevel tool took it right off of there. So again, the key is to have a good, sharp, polished tool, and that's what's going to give you the best results. this side and that's it so now I'm beveled on both sides so that's it for this episode next episode you come back we'll go ahead and start doing the next steps of uh, some basket weave stamping we'll burnish the edges and this thing will really start looking sharp so thanks a lot for watching make sure you subscribe tell your friends and thank you. See you next time.